All right, so we're going to do a quick brake job on the uh, 65 Beetle here. Figured I'd turn the camera on. Show you a few things you might need if you're going to service the original brakes. This would probably be a good time to decide whether you want to upgrade to disc brakes or stay with the original drum brakes. Uh, there are some benefits to the disc brakes. Some of the kits are uh, lower quality. There are some really good quality uh, kits available out there. Bad brakes, uh, different companies. Uh, some of the empty stuff is okay. You have to check the uh, brackets that you get with the kit. Some of them flex. So you want to make sure that you get a good quality kit if you're going to replace the OEM parts. Uh, these brakes are quite adequate. They'll stop a car uh, pretty good. You can do some uh, tricks to these. If you want to upgrade the brakes a little bit, you can put a dual master cylinder. This has a single on it, but you can upgrade that. Uh, you can put uh, Super Beetle wheel cylinders on them. You can, you can do all kinds of stuff to increase the brake horsepower with drum brakes if you can't afford a disc brake setup. Some of the disc brake setups, though, have become uh, pretty affordable. And uh, sometimes that's just a decision people make. Now, sometimes when you go to a disc brake setup, it can change the offset of the wheel. So you want to make sure that you're uh, dealing with something that you can uh, live with. If you're going to push your wheel out, you want to make sure you're going to have clearance on your fender. And if you're going to move the wheel in, you want to make sure that you're going to clear the body of the car and your suspension components. So you just want to note that it's a straight up offset or if it's negative to the inside or positive to the outside. That's something to ask when you're buying a disc brake kit. So let's take a look at a few of the components here. We have a couple new wheel cylinders. We're gonna use the used seal over again. Not the preferred method, but uh, it's just what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna put a set of shoes on here. They're a little on the thin side. They're not too bad. They're not wet, and this cylinder looks like it's been replaced. But we'll go ahead and upgrade with some new parts here. And we repacked the wheel bearings. Uh, they were making a little noise. This has got the uh, roller type bearing set up. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a removable race and then it's got large uh, rollers in a cage. And uh, it's a little different type of bearing than the uh, typical tapered wheel bearing on the later model ones. Uh, the later model car has a single jam nut. These have uh, two nuts. I believe these are uh, 27 millimeter. Don't uh, quote me on that. But uh, when I went off to college, I drove an early model Beetle and I had one of these bearings fail on me. And I had a really hard time finding this, uh, this hardware on the road. Eventually found the uh, parts that I needed and uh, got on with it. So let's go ahead and uh, break this down. A few things that I like to use. I have a mask here. Uh, you always want to wear a mask when you blow this off because uh, you know, most of the new shoes that you're going to encounter aren't going to be uh, harmful to your lungs, but some of the early shoes had asbestos, and there could be some possible dust hanging out in here from, uh, you know, an old set of shoes. So you want to wear a respirator or a very good uh, dust mask. A respirator would probably be a better way to go, so you uh, protect yourself from any of those particulates. So I'm going to set the camera down on the uh, barrel cam here and uh, we're going to try to jam this out uh, so we can uh, get this done. We're going to put the mask on. First step. First thing I like to do is blow everything off with some compressed air. Now you can buy brake clean and you want to have a container under there so you can catch all your stuff. Uh, water works really good on this type of uh, particulate brake uh, pad funk as long as the wheel cylinder is not blown. We don't have a blown wheel cylinder here, so we're just going to shoot some brake fluid or cleaner on it and then we're going to blow it off with some compressed air. Now for the air part, let it drip a little bit so you don't blow that all over yourself. Get the excess off here. 
There you go. All right, got that blown off. Now we're gonna disassemble the uh, brakes here and uh, service some of the components. Take the little spring off first. It's very easy, the small spring goes on the front. The large spring almost is always on the wheel cylinder side. And another tip when you're doing brakes is uh, just start on one side, do one side at a time, and then move to the other side. And that way you always have a reference where you can go back and look at your work on the other side of the car. This is uh, the shoe spring. You need one of these uh, tools or you can use a pair of pliers. It just has this slot in it and then you turn it and the pin locks on that. It's pretty basic. put my finger on the pin in the back so the pin doesn't turn and uh, sometimes that can help you set those shoes off to the side next thing we want to do is get our adjusters out we're gonna have to uh, take these over and clean them up on the wire wheel hopefully the snap-on guy's not watching did you use that screwdriver for a chisel no sir You can see that bottom adjuster was frozen in there, and uh, it's frozen in the uh, the adjuster. So you'll need a pair of vice grips for this part. Open the vice grips up, clamp the. Uh, I like to clamp the star part of the adjuster. That way you're not scarring up the part that rides in the barrel. This is an important part of the brake job. You want to make sure that you do this yourself or whoever does your brake job does this because without cleaning and freeing these up, you lose the ability to adjust the brakes. So, and these are self adjusters. So, you know, you sort of have to, to have those free. So I'll repeat the process on this other one here. You don't have to uh, crimp it really hard. You don't want to damage the adjusters. A lot of times you'll uh, open these up and these will be all peened over from where somebody took a punch and adjusted them. These adjust through the drum. Sometimes they adjust through the backing plate. You'll see the backing plate all tore up. Da 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 da. So you want to be, uh, you know, be gentle. Do a nice job with it. Clean it up. I break the bleeder off. That's personal preference. You don't have to do that. It makes it easier to get the wrench onto the hose. And I break the hose loose and I retighten it. And the reason I retighten it is because now I need to break the uh, line or the uh, wheel cylinder loose, which is a 13 millimeter. But for some reason, I don't have here. Let me grab that. All right, 13 will hold the uh, wheel cylinder on. Where did you grab 12? Of course I did. Anyway, 13. What you need, not a 12. Sometimes, you know, you just can't prepare. Anyway, take the uh, 13 out. It'll be an 8 by 125 pitch uh, bolt. I just take the hammer and uh, 
tap the wheel cylinder where it loosens up in the backing plate. And you put your 14 millimeter wrench back on there, you already broke it loose. And then you can spin the uh, wheel cylinder out. Now we'll grab a new wheel cylinder out here, take a look at that. And then we're going to do a few other things before we install this. Here's our new wheel cylinder, it's a German. I don't know if it's made in Germany, but the box is from Germany. Now at this point, what I like to do so I'll take a paper towel here. I just wrap the uh, spindle up. You don't want a bunch of you know stuff on your spindle. Normally I would spray bomb. Don't have a spray bomb, so we're going to use a little uh, paint gun action. A little black paint on the backing plate, you know. So it looks like you care it a little bit. You can see the backing plate is pretty fitted, but we made an effort. Now we're going to take the camera and we're going to go over to the uh, wire wheel. I'll show you the next process why that's setting up. Let me get you set up on this. Uh, non camera stand set up. Alright, we're gonna use the wire wheel. We're gonna clean these adjusters up. Always wear your safety shield. Gotta be careful with that, don't drop it. Alrighty, on to the next part. Hey, where are you going with my Gorilla Glue? I just didn't know what he was going to need. Get, no, just get the liquid nail one. Put the other two back. The other two are really expensive. All right. My wife was hijacking my Gorilla Glue. Now we need some, uh, I like to use white lithium grease. You can use whatever you like. This seems to work good for the situation. A little on the uh, adjuster. Put some in the hole there. You want these to, uh, you know, work freely all the way to the bottom. And I just wipe that excess off and put it on the barrel. And I take a paper towel and just give it a, you know, wipe down so you don't have grease flying around in there. There's one. There's number two.
grease on the uh, part that spins in the old uh, barrel there. Or the holder, whatever you want to call it. Alright. Now we got our adjusters all uh, cleaned up, freed up, and ready to uh, work for us. We'll cap the grease back up. And the next thing we're going to do is install our uh, wheel cylinder on. I like to stick the hose through the backing plate, mm -hmm. like so. Give her a spin. Get her started. 13 millimeter bolt. Got that back in, you want to make sure this is tight. Don't ever start this. You don't want to start that and walk away from it. You want to make sure that you have that process done before you move on to something else. So now we're going to align our uh, pistons for our pads. I'm going to pull the paper towel back off. We're gonna wipe our hands off because we don't want like grease all over our uh, brand new parts. So, shoes are next. The slot goes towards the wheel cylinder. And the uh, adjuster is slotted. You wanna make sure that you have the slot turned correctly where the shoe sits flat in the adjuster. go and install our uh, spring clamp back on here turn that straight up hold it with your finger get your uh, piece straight up in your tool and turn it and that's it that's how that locks back on I'll go for the uh, second new shoe same thing, slot towards the wheel cylinder. You make sure your shoe is sitting flat and the adjuster is turned the proper way. Go. That's in here, you gotta sorta of hold the shoe and load the tool. Line that up so you're not chasing it. Now we're going to reinstall our springs. We're going to put our light spring on the adjuster side. Put your finger right there on the uh, metal part where there's no shoe. Steady the shoe. This spring's a little heavier, so I like to put it on the, uh, the top first and pull down to the hole. Like so. Now you just want to take these and move them back and forth like so. Make sure that they're properly seated. Our adjusters are at the uh, furthest point in. We're going to go ahead and put our... We've got our inner wheel bearing packed. We're going to go ahead and put the seal in. Take a paper towel and uh, wipe that seal off, but you want to put a thin coat of grease on this seal like so. If you leave this seal dry, it'll squeak. You'll hear beep, 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 beep. And that's the seal hitting the back of the plate there. It'll make a squeaking sound. So make sure you put a little bit of lube on that. It doesn't take a lot. You just need to have a little bit of grease on the surface of the seal. Now we're ready to... Uh, Reinstall our drum. Inner bearing goes, or the outer bearing goes on next. We'll take that hair off of there. Andrea stopped by. I'll work this bearing in with your hand. Make sure 
sure it's seated in there. Next is your uh, thick washer. It has a flat side and a rounded side. You want to put the flat side towards the bearing. Next is a nut. These are reverse thread on the driver's side. And we're going to take our uh, adjustable wrench here and tighten this down. And we're going to seat it. Seat it first, tighten it, and then we're going to back it off. The trick here is you want to be able to move this washer. Now this washer can be hard to check on one of these early model cars. You don't want to compromise the cage while you're doing this. Put a wrench right here. You can put the uh, screwdriver between the wrench. washer should move like that. See how it just barely moves, but it moves. Now we have a locking plate that goes between the two nuts. It has a key on it, and the spindle is splined on the top. We install our nut. We install our second nut. You just want to snug it, don't tighten it to where the other nut turns. Now we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to peen this over. Okay? And then for one more time before you put the cap on there, you want to take a screwdriver and a hammer and you want to gently place your screwdriver on this washer and make sure the washer moves a little bit and it still does so we're good to go next step is the uh, grease cap I'm going to push the speedometer cable through go ahead and insert your uh, cable into the cap slide the cap back with the cable and we have to put our uh, clip in here seems to have disappeared on me piece of wire that goes on there to keep the uh, cable retained into the cap. So that's pretty much what we're, uh, what we're doing. It's a drum brake job. Of course we didn't replace the drums. These drums are sort of rare and this drum still has plenty of material left on it. So we're good there. The shoes were just a little on the thin side. So we'll repeat that process on the other side and uh, we'll have brakes again. I need to put in an axle boot on the rear. Maybe I'll uh, turn the camera on for that. I've had a couple people ask me about those. They're pretty easy. Uh, they're just